I'm here today to talk to you guys about translating text with CSS. And when I say that, I don't mean this. That's not what I mean. I don't mean transform, translate. I'm talking about translating text. And before I can get into that, I want to talk about the current translation methods. And what I'm going to show you today is probably going to be pretty controversial, but I think it's worth looking into as one of the techniques to translate, especially if you have a single page without any complex server configurations. And it's actually pretty cool. So hopefully you guys will find this helpful. So this is something you guys probably see a lot on lots of web pages. And this works perfectly fine. You can have a uh, Google Translate button to change the language. And your viewers may appreciate that if you're catering to more than one language. This works perfectly well. And, but the problem is that sometimes these translations aren't too accurate. And if you want to be really you know, prudent about your translations, you're going to get a translation team and manage those translations. Um, another thing you can do is you can use the XCEP language header. Now, this is kind of the de facto solution. You check the HTTP request. This is included with HTTP 1.1 specification. And we can obviously check the language. Uh, this, is, uh, this goes to the configuration uh, that's set in the browser. So that, that is the uh, language that would appear here. Um, we can also do it with, the, uh, with IP sniffing. And um, you can see here, this, is, uh, this was geolocated to France. This is my IP when I was at my Airbnb. And you can also use JavaScript, and then you can just set the lang this way. Uh, by This is basically the same as the accept language, very similar. And uh, this is actually something I'm going to be showing you guys how to use um, in conjunction with CSS, of course. And there's the content language, but don't use that. So um, this is another thing you often see. You see domains with uh, like English, French, Spanish, Chinese. You have subdomains that are redirected. And that works too. But the problem with all these is you still have to refresh. And I don't know about you guys, but I freaking hate page refreshes. I'm waiting for a response here. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, that's one of the problems. There's another problem, too. Um, you might have to configure your, your CDN. You might have to do all kinds of configurations. Maybe the CDN you're using doesn't support that. So um, the first, I, I kind of embarked on a journey here to, to, to see if I could do this all in CSS. And my first approach was using the checkbox hack, and it just basically tabs. So this is what it looks like. You just go between the tabs here. And that seemed OK, but there's a couple problems with that. First, you have to repeat all languages, potentially hides the body, yada, yada, yada. Many, many issues with this. So I didn't really like it. And then this is the second approach I took. So this is using the adder, so using uh, the check, and then you can use before. And uh, then you can just append the data as if it were all in attributes. But there's another problem with that. And uh, basically, this is what it looks like. It looks exactly the same. But there's a problem, if you've noticed, you can't have any nested elements like a tags, span tags, and so forth. So it bloats the page, and it still requires a rule for every language, which is problematic. So this is my final approach. I think this is pretty cool. So basically, this is, uh, this is stylus code. And basically, what you do is you just add your, the translated text side by side. And then you can just, uh, this is just a loop using stylus. You go through the languages, and then you just go and fall back to the display initial. That allows you to cascade properly. And uh, this is what it looks like in the final result. So you can just click on the um, French or English, and it automatically translates everything. So uh, this is using the uh, JSON selector. So uh, not, not just JSON, but any subsequent elements that follow this pattern will, uh, will allow you to translate your text uh, just as if you'd normally have just translated text. But it works seamlessly, and you don't have to refresh the page. So this is super great if you want to uh, just do small bits of text and translate. And it also is a great user experience. but um, does kind of pour for rich text, but awesome if you just have small bits of text on your page. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Uh, this is my um, contact information, and hit me up if you guys have any questions. Thank you so much.